Whether you're wanting to start a reading journal or add reading journal tracking spreads into your bullet journal, today's video is for you. I'm sharing five different ways to track the books that you read, and each layout is a little bit different. Some are super speedy to set up, some are for those of us who like to include a little bit more data, and some are all about showcasing the book covers. Which one will you use? Let's find out. Hi, my name's Erin, and my channel is all about bullet journaling, reading journaling, and stationery. I'm so happy to have you here. The notebook I'm using for this video is from Archer and Olive's Vintage Library subscription box last year, so unfortunately it's no longer available, but isn't it perfect for reading journal things? We're going to start out with what I think is the quickest and easiest one to set up, and this is actually the tracking spread that I use in my own reading journal. It's pretty much just a list, but it's a list across two columns so that you can fit more data on the page in one go. For each of the setups in this video, I'm going to show you an example on the left page all filled in so you can see what it would look like when it's finished, and on the right page I'm going to add just the bare bones of the layout, just the lines and the grid measurements as well so that you can easily transfer this into your own journal. With any kind of list setup in my journal, I like to use a light colored marker to offset every second row so it's easier to kind of track where you're up to in the setup. I'm using the Tombow N89, which is the light warm gray. It's my very favorite pen for this, but you can use any light colored pen that you have, especially if it goes with a theme, if you're making this part of a series of pages. And I always like to make sure when I set this one up that I'm leaving a bit of space at the top and bottom of the page to add decoration because I am much more likely to use my pages when they're pretty. Each of these columns are 13 spaces wide. I like to use spaces rather than dots, but if you prefer to use dots, you can just add one number to each of the numbers that I give you, so that would be 14 dots wide. And the columns are also 28 spaces tall, or 29 dots from top to bottom. I've extended mine all the way out to the horizontal edges of the page, so I haven't left any dots spare on the right or left, but you could always make yours narrower if you prefer. That means mine stretches the full 26 spaces of the page. And I've left five spaces blank at the top and five spaces underneath as well for decoration. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate the left page so you can get an idea of how this might look with something pretty above and below the space that we'll actually use to track the books. I'm using the Violet Bliss PET tape from the washi tape shop, as well as a couple of just solid color washi tapes that match the colors in these flowers. If you love a floral PET tape like I do, then I really recommend this as an instant theme. It's such an easy way to make a whole theme come together very quickly and easily. Just pick two colors of washi tape that go nicely with your PET tape, layer some PET tape over the top of it, and there you go, your theme's all done. Of course, you can decorate this however you like, and if it's part of an overall layout, keeping things consistent with the pages that come before it is what's going to make things feel really cohesive. We already know what this page is for because it's the theme of the whole video, but I'm going to make a little heading for this one as an example. I'm using letter stamps and a brush marker to letter these onto some sticker paper, and I'm just going to cut that out and stick it at the top so that if this was part of a more comprehensive theme at the beginning of your bullet journal or at the beginning of your reading journal, then it's clear at a glance what this page is for. I mentioned earlier this is actually the setup that I use in my own reading journal. This is from last year, and I've ended up adding an extra page in here because I read a lot more than I expected to. I've added that in with a bit of washi tape, but it's basically the exact same setup. It's just the number, the title of the book, and the author. And here it is again in my current reading journal for 2024. I learned from my experience last year running out of space, so I actually made this stretch across two spreads rather than just one, and I cut down the middle page so that it would act like a Dutch door the way that the previous one did, but actually I just removed some of the page instead of adding a whole new one in. I'm going to go ahead and populate this example page with the books that I've read so far this year because that's the easiest way to pull up some data. But I have set up my full reading journal for 2024 and I've been doing monthly videos where I set up some monthly tracking things there as well. So if you'd like to see those, there's a link to the playlist in the top right corner of the screen or down in the description below if you'd like to see more of my own reading journal in action. I like to keep this spread pretty simple so it's just the number of the book, the title and the author, but you could expand this to include whatever information you like if you wanted to include the genre or the dates that you read it or the format that you read the book in. Just keep in mind that if you're including any other information, you might want to have this stretch across more than one page or even more than one spread. That said, let's move on to a layout that really caters for that information and also features some book covers. If you're someone who really likes to decorate your journal spreads, this one might not be the right fit for you, or you might find that you want to adapt it. The way I'm setting it up for this example will accommodate eight books on the page, but if you wanted to include some decoration, you might want to condense that down to just six and leave a bit of space to add that decoration back in. Basically, this one is a big grid. It divides the page in half horizontally, so you have two columns, and it divides the page into quarters vertically, so you have four rows, and each one of those spaces will hold a book cover and any other information that you want to keep track of. 
I'm using a ruler for all of my lines in this setup, but you could absolutely freehand these too. Just remember if you're using a ruler, it's a good idea to wipe it off after every page so that you don't end up smudging things around. I've gone ahead and printed book covers on a piece of sticker paper for this video. Usually I use my HP sprocket for my journal, but I needed to do a lot of book covers, so I thought this might be more efficient, and I'm cutting them down with this straight edge cutting tool. I will have links in the description to everything that I can link you to that I'm using in this video in case you'd like to get your hands on anything. Goodreads is a really good place to source your book covers if you want to do this kind of thing, and don't worry too much if they don't look like they're perfect quality. When you're printing them this small, it kind of doesn't matter. And then I dumped them all into Microsoft Word in order to size them the way I wanted to. Most journals with dot grid paper have a 5mm dot grid, which means two dot grid spaces is one centimetre. So I made all of my book covers three and a half centimetres tall by two and a half centimetres wide. I wanted to add star ratings to this tracker as well, so I'm using my star rating stamp. I got this from Etsy. It's linked in the description if you want to get one for yourself, but you could also use star rating stickers, which you can get in many places online or make for yourself, or you can just draw your stars by hand. That's totally fine too. As far as other information, I'm including the title and the author of each book, the format that I read it in, and the dates that it took me to read. Let's very quickly set up that grid again on the right page so I can tell you all about the dimensions. Some of them are actually very similar to the previous spread that I showed you. Because we're still dividing the page in half without leaving any space on the right or left side, each column is going to still be 13 spaces wide from left to right. Most A5 dot grid journals have 38 spaces from top to bottom. Unfortunately, when you divide 38 by 4, you don't get a whole number, so each of the vertical spaces here is 9.5 spaces. That means there are a couple of spots where you actually need to draw your line between the dots and not on top of the dots, but it gives you such a beautifully balanced and symmetrical layout, I really think it's worth it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and populate this with all of the book covers and the information for each one as well. These are all books that I've actually read, but not all that recently. I just went back through my Goodreads history and printed a whole bunch of book covers based on those, so I'm just using them for some dummy information, if you will. Again, you could add some more data in here if you'd like to, if you wanted to include the genre or the release date of the book, or if it's part of a series, you might want to include which installment in the series it is. I like to keep my series information on a separate series tracker page and I also have review spreads for each of these books so I usually put the extra information over there but that's the wonderful thing about a page like this is that you can really set it up to work in whatever way you prefer. Those measurements I mentioned earlier for the book covers they actually translate into dot grid spaces because I did that on purpose I was trying to be smart. Two and a half centimeters wide works out to five dot grid spaces, although I've drawn this one out as four and a half because I lost a little bit of the design of some of them when I was cutting them out with that straight edge tool, so I've kind of factored that in here. And vertically, three and a half centimeters works out to seven spaces tall, and once again, I've taken off an extra half space just to allow for some cutting there. I think having two of this page next to each other for someone who typically reads maybe 10 to 15 books a year would be a really great way to incorporate it into a normal bullet journal. Or if you're someone who reads a lot, you could have one or two of these pages for every month. Let's move on to our third book tracker idea here, and this one I've actually borrowed from Amanda, otherwise known as Books Ergo Sum on Instagram, and I truly steal so many of my best ideas from her, she's amazing. Amanda tracks her books 10 at a time, so every 10 books she adds another one of these pages and she calls it her table of contents. You could also follow Amanda's lead, but I'm a little bit more of a set up at the beginning and fill it out as you go kind of a girl, so I would set up a few of these pages at the beginning of my journal rather than doing one every 10 books. Also, Amanda reads a lot more than me, so that is also a factor here. I'm also going to keep this to 10 to a page, but if you wanted to add a few more at the top and bottom and forego any decoration, you could absolutely do that. We all know that I love my decoration, so I will try to factor it in wherever I can. I'm using boxes just to make this really clear where everything's going to sit on the page, and I love to put things in a box, but Amanda's version actually has highlighted lines that determine the spaces where the book titles and things are going to go, so if you prefer the look of that, you could absolutely opt for a coloured line instead of drawing out all of these boxes. But the spacing would somewhat work the same. Amanda has an extra gap in between each of hers, whereas I'm using the box to take care of that for me. And I think she's also using a B5 journal, whereas this one is A5, so the page is a bit smaller, which limits the amount of space that we have vertically too, so things to keep in mind. The total horizontal space of my functional area of the page here is 22 spaces wide, and I've left two spaces blank on the left and right side, so there's nothing on those outside edges. I've split the big box into two columns. There's a narrow column on the left side and a much wider column on the right. The narrow column is three dot grid spaces wide, and the wider one is 19. I've left four dot grid spaces blank at the top of the page, so my layout starts four dot grid spaces down from the first row of dots. And the total vertical space of my entire functional area is 30 dot grid spaces tall. 
which should leave another four dock grid spaces underneath it blank as well, and we're going to use that area for some decoration. 30 divides really well by 10, so in order to make our 10 spaces for 10 books, we're going to leave gaps of three spaces vertically, and voila, it's ready to add your books. The smaller column on the left is for the number of the book, so if you're trying to reach a particular reading goal, like 30 books in a year, you know what number you're up to. I'm using the three vertical spaces beside that for title, author, and dates read. Down in the bottom right corner of each box, I'm going to add my star rating stamp, and then I'm going to track the format just above that at the top of the space. When you have a star rating stamp like this, it makes it a lot easier to get in ahead of time and set up the whole page so it's ready for you to just add your book titles, add your star ratings, and off you go. It's a great one if you don't care too much about including the book covers in your journal. And just in case you were wondering about the size of my star rating stamp, the stars fit perfectly vertically into a dot grid space and it takes up around about six spaces from left to right. Again inspired by lovely Amanda, I'm going to stamp the numbers down the left column here, but you could absolutely just write these in with a pen instead if you'd like, or even print them if you prefer, or use stickers. There are so many ways you could make this your own. Now let's add some book data so you can see what this would look like all filled in. Once again, I'm just drawing on my existing Goodreads and Storygraph data here so that I can fill this in without having to think too hard about it. Because I can't help myself, it's time to add some decoration, and this time I'm going to use this PET tape. This one's the Golden Blossoms Wide PET Tape from the Washi Tape Shop. Now I have the unfair advantage here of already having all of the data on the page, so I can go ahead and overlap some of these pieces over the top of the grid lines, so I know they're not going to interfere with any of the information because I can already see where the information is. I really like having the pretty decorative elements overlap a little bit with the functional elements of my page. It just makes things look really deliberate, but if you're setting this up in advance and planning to populate it later as you go, you might not have that luxury. But if you still want the page to look really intentional, instead of having things sit over the top, I recommend cutting them off right at the line of your functional part of the layout, and then it will look like they're disappearing behind it, which still functions to give you that really deliberate and dimensional feeling. Another great thing about this layout is that there's plenty of room for long book titles. The Serpent and the Wings of Night had no trouble fitting on this page. Let's forge ahead, and the next one is great for you if you love to have a book cover featured, but you don't have time to fuss around with anything else. This one is a really visually impactful page, especially if you read a lot. It's a really good way to kind of like hit that home to be like, look at all of these books I read. It also has star rating information on it, so you can see at a glance how books stacked up against each other and what you thought of a book without having to write out all of the extra data. If you don't care so much about format or dates read or anything like that, this could be a really good option. There are kind of two ways you could set this up, so I'm going to show you one way on the left page and a different way on the right page. The sizing is the same, it's just a slightly different stylistic choice. This is a really efficient tracking layout because you can actually fit in an A4 journal with this spacing, 12 books per page. This is something I actually use kind of month to month in my own bullet journal. I'll do a maybe next or reading forecast or to be read page, and I'll also track any books that I actually end up reading against a calendar so I can see my dates read. And that to be read section and any other books that I read that weren't part of that go onto a layout that's quite similar to this. You can see the boxes on the left page are open. I've drawn the corners of them but not filled them all the way in. On the right page I'm going to do complete boxes which is faster but maybe slightly less stylistically interesting. Either way this is where the book covers are going to go and I've sized these once again to correspond to the size of the book covers that I've printed which are three and a half centimeters tall by two and a half centimeters wide. I'm jumping in again with my ink pad and my star rating stamp and I'm going to position that underneath each one of these boxes so it's really clear which books I loved, which books I didn't love, and which books were kind of mediocre to me. Again, if you don't have a star rating stamp like mine, you could use stickers, you can make your own stickers, you can draw your stars in yourself, or you can just skip the star rating altogether, and you would actually have enough space on the page then to add another row of book covers. Each of my book cover spaces is five dot grid spaces wide by seven dot grid spaces tall. I've left one dot grid space blank underneath each box before I've added the star rating stamp in the one underneath that. And then I've left another two dot grid spaces below the star rating stamp before I've added the next box for the next book cover. 
I've also left two dot grid spaces horizontally between each book cover space, and I have five dot grid spaces vertically from the top of the first row of book covers, so I'll have plenty of space to add some decoration and a heading if I like. Down the bottom, however, there are only two dot grid spaces from the bottom row of the star rating stamps to the bottom of the page. Challenge accepted though, I will still squeeze some decoration into that space even if there isn't much room. For this one I'm just going to use some patterned washi tape to decorate the page. These ones all came in a set together so they already look good all matched up. I'm doing a strip of a regular sized washi tape all the way along the bottom, the same one all the way along the top for some nice cohesion, and then a second strip of a different washi tape from the same set just underneath that one at the top to fill in a little bit more space, add a little bit more texture and contrast, but still keep it really simple and quick to set up. Then we just need to add our book covers and our star ratings and we are all set. I went ahead and planned out the placement of these book covers so they would look good across the page because this is for a YouTube video and I have that luxury, but if you were doing this in the actual order of the books that you're reading it might look a little bit less balanced than mine, that's totally okay. Also the ratings I'm giving the books for this video are somewhat accurate to my actual ratings for these books just based on what I remember of them, but quite a few of my favourites actually made it onto this page, so let me know if you also loved any of the books that I loved from this page. Those of you who are not into data, I see you, I'm here for you, here is a page for you. Let me know if you can see yourself using this one. We have one book tracking page left to set up for this video, and I feel like this one is a bit of a reading journal tradition. It looks a little bit complicated, but I promise you it's much easier to set up than it seems. This is the illustrated bookshelf tracker, the one where you have bookshelves and you draw all the books onto them and then you write the name of each book onto the spine of the books that you drew. This one's going to be a very kind of choose your own adventure page. I will give you the specifications that I'm using, but depending on how much you read or how you want to use this page, you might need to adapt it to give yourself a little bit more page space above or below. The page I'm setting up on the left now actually ended up having space to track 51 books, so if you're not kind of hitting around that area, you might not need to have five shelves like I'm setting up, you might just want to have four or even three. There are a bunch of ways you can use this to track data that isn't necessarily written on the page too, so you might want to leave yourself some space for a key. The first thing you want to do here, just like if you were building real shelves for holding books in the real world, is to draw out the shelves, and mine are just one dot grid space tall, and they go all the way across the page, leaving two dot grid spaces on the left side and two dot grid spaces on the right. I used a ruler for my shelves, but that's totally optional. If you want to have more of a sketchy, kind of lived-in look for your layout, you could totally freehand your shelves. I am freehanding my books, however. Same thing, if you wanted to use a ruler to get really nice crispy lines, you can do that. Here's the big secret. The books are just rectangles, and it's very easy to draw a rectangle. You want to make sure your rectangles are wide enough that you can write some text on them if you're planning to track the title of each book. I find I can only fit the title, I don't typically get the author name on there as well, but that's fine for me if I'm using this kind of layout. You want to have your vertical books that are standing up sometimes be different heights or different widths. You want to lie some of them down and stack them on top of each other so they're horizontal rectangles. And if you want to get really fancy, you can make some of them lean at a diagonal angle so they're resting against other books as though they've kind of fallen over a little bit and the book next to it is what's holding it up. I also really like to leave gaps on my bookshelves for this kind of layout that I can use for decoration. I think plenty of us put decor on our bookshelves in our homes, right? So this is kind of the same idea but in your journal instead. And if you don't want to doodle all of those little decor pieces in the gaps that you leave, you can use stickers or stamps to fill those in instead and they will look so professional. On the other hand, if you are a super voracious reader and you smash through heaps of books and you want to make sure there's space to track them all, you don't have to leave any gaps for little decor pieces. I'm going to do the right page with that option in mind. So only books, no gaps, just heaps and heaps of books stacked up vertically and horizontally and leaning on each other on the shelves. I mentioned this earlier, but just to reiterate, I've left two spaces on each side of each of my shelves, which are one dot grid space tall, and I've left six dot grid spaces between each of my shelves to allow space for books. The books themselves are somewhere in the area of one to one and a half dot grid spaces wide, but it's not super important to be super accurate about that. And the height of all the books is varied on purpose, but they're somewhere in the realm of three and a half to five spaces tall, generally. If you like to keep track of the number of books you've read just for your own information or because you're trying to hit a reading goal, I recommend adding the number of books that are on each shelf at the end of the row just so you have a little reference for that. 
and if you really don't want to have to keep counting them regularly, you can actually add each number below each book on the actual shelf itself, as long as you end up colouring in your shelf with a colour that you'll be able to see your pen through. You'll see in a minute that I'm going to colour mine in black so that wouldn't work so well for me, but if you choose a different colour that'll be a little bit easier for you. Now I'm just using my leftover book covers so I can get an idea of some names to write on these spines so you can see what it would all look like filled in. I'm going to be using stickers to fill in the gaps on my shelves, so I'm adding this little bust up the top. I've got this cloche kind of a thing going on here. We've got a clock. Anything like that that you would actually find on a bookshelf is a really good option here. You can use candles, you could use globes. Some people like to display fantasy items if they read a lot of fantasy books, so like swords and things like that. You could put whatever you like here. I had my cat on one of these in a journal that I've done previously. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to pick some colours that look nice together. I'm just swatching them to make sure before I commit to any, and I'm going to colour in all of the book spines. But I wanted to mention this is an opportunity for tracking if you want to track something like genre or the number of pages in a book, how long it is, or the format that you read it in, whether it was on audiobook or ebook or a paperback or a hardcover. Whatever it is you might want to track, you can assign each of those categories to a colour and then colour in the book spine in the colour that matches that category. So say for instance the brown I'm using here meant audiobook, that would mean all of those brown books that I coloured in, I listened to audiobooks. The grey maybe means ebook, so I know that all of the grey spines are books that I listen to on ebook. Or if you're someone who reads mostly digitally and you don't have a physical bookshelf and you want this to kind of stand in for it, you can colour in the spines to match the colour of the actual book covers and then it will sort of feel like you have an actual bookshelf, even if you don't have space for one in your home. I've actually done that trick before in my own journal and it was fun. <laughs> Now I wanted to add some colour to my shelves. I really recommend actually doing this before you add any stickers down if that's how you're planning to decorate your shelves is with some stickers because I had to peel mine up in order to get my pen underneath there which was a little bit annoying but not the end of the world. And see how cute this page is looking? There's still a little bit of space kind of around the corners or on the left and right side to add some decoration if you have a theme that you want to tie it into but it's totally not necessary because it's kind of decoration in itself. Oh and if you were wondering how many books fit on the shelf on the right page, it was 70. Since this is a setup that I've used myself in the past, I thought I'd show you how I used it. I actually used it more as a goal tracker rather than as a record of the books that I read. So this one I wanted to read 50 books and I've doodled all of my extra decorations by hand. That one was from 2022, this is my 2023 version, and this is where I was trying to match the book covers to the colour of the actual book cover because I didn't own physical copies of these ones. I've included the tiny number on the bookshelf so I know what I'm up to since this is a goal tracker, although I never finished the last couple on the bottom shelf. I actually posted a full flip through of that completed journal on my channel, so I'll pop a link to that in the corner and in the description in case you'd like to see all the way through, but here is the finished bookshelf and I think it looks so fun. And those are my five ideas for tracking books in your journal. Let me know if one of them spoke to you more than the others. I'd really like to hear which ones resonate with you. Have you used any of these layouts in the past or do you plan to use any of them in the future? And if you do and you got the idea from me, please tag me. I'd love to see. I am at erinsmith.art on Instagram in case you want to find me over there too. And I have new videos here on YouTube every week featuring something to do with bullet journaling or reading journaling or stationery in general. In case you'd like to keep watching, here is a link to another video I posted recently about reading journaling. This is a very comprehensive look at everything I read in February and also setting up my reading journal pages for March. And underneath that is a link to all of my reading journal videos that I have ever made. I hope you enjoy and I'll catch you again next week. Bye.